If you'd walked into my bedroom growing up, once you got past the half-inch coat of Pokemon cards that cover the ground at any given time, you'd be greeted by a series of posters I received for my eighth birthday. There are a number I liked and I can still picture today. Derek Jeter, Muhammad Ali, Darth Vader. But in the middle, surrounded by all the rest, was my favorite. A 22 by 34 inch still of Lance Armstrong. I'm not ashamed to say that at one time he was my hero. His work ethic, perseverance, conviction, and fortitude inspired me to be the best I could be. He taught me that as long as you had the will to work hard enough, you could overcome any challenge. During a press conference on October 8, 1996, Lance Armstrong announced to the world that he had been diagnosed with testicular cancer. But rather than seeking sympathy, Lance announced on stage that he not only intended to beat the disease, but to ride again as a professional cyclist. As you all know, he did end up surviving, and he proved to the world that odds can be beaten. I can remember watching him put every last ounce of effort into scaling the Pyrenees in the 2002 Tour de France. I can remember getting my first Livestrong band and refusing, for whatever reason, to take it off. And I can remember watching Lance Armstrong admit on national television that he had used performance-enhancing drugs during all seven of his Tour de France victories, and had used threats and intimidation to silence those who had discovered his secret. I can remember taking down the poster from my wall and leaving it in the trash can in my garage. I would be lying if I said this somehow changed me, if it altered the standards I held myself to. I didn't cry when I found out the man who I had idolized turned out to be a fraud. I wasn't even angry. I just felt cold. I didn't know then that what I was experiencing was just another part of growing up. You see, it's just something we grow accustomed to, watching our heroes fall. First, it's the favorite childhood athlete that's convicted of animal cruelty or using a performance-enhancing drug. Then it's the politician that the nation rallies behind, only to be caught in an extramarital affair. In preparing for the speech, I went to many of my friends and teachers and talked to them about their heroes. Some of them spoke of close family members or soldiers or first responders, but no one I talked to mentioned a figure that they had idolized from their youth. In our society, the media tends to sway between two very opposite polarities. On one hand, there's the watchdog mentality, where any misstep or gaffe, no matter how innocent, is broadcast to the public. But at the same time, there's this predisposition toward hero worship, to take someone who, in most respects, is good and moral, and raise them up onto a pedestal so high off the ground, the only thing they can do is fall. And that's the problem right there, because at the end of the day, no one person is perfect. But no matter how many times we're told this, we're still crushed when our heroes do fall. And what results is this endless cycle of enchantment and heartbreak. A man once said, don't underestimate the world. It can corrupt quickly and completely. Now, while that may dishearten you, you must allow yourself to see the reality we live in. This is not an ideal world, and we are not perfect beings. And it's that combination that can lead even the best of people, with what may be even the best of intentions, to fall. That man, that man who said, don't underestimate the world, it can, it can corrupt quickly and completely, that man was Joe Paterno. How does it happen? How do these, these supermen, these gods among men, fall so far? They surely don't just wake up one day and suddenly find themselves willing to do something that could smear everything they stand for. It's a process, a progression. It starts small, with tiny, invisible slips from grace. Maybe when they're 15 years old, they're sitting in their English class taking a vocab quiz. They didn't have time to study, but they look over and their neighbor did. They think to themselves, what's wrong with cheating? It's just a 10-point quiz. It's nothing. It doesn't matter. And after all, they're not hurting anyone. So they do it. And right then, the barrier is broke. Then they're working on a term paper, and there's this one line that is just so perfect. The only problem is they didn't write it. But it's just one line, and no one will know. And they're not hurting anyone. So they take it. Then they're sitting in an exam. 
They realize that they've forgotten one of the formulas they need. But right outside the room is their backpack, and inside their notes. They could just ask to go to the bathroom. No one would know. They studied, they worked hard, they deserve it. And after all, they're not hurting anyone. So they do it. And this continues and continues until one day, that tiny invisible slip, it isn't a slip anymore. They fall. They teach a little boy that if he works hard enough, anything is possible. They teach a little boy that he can be a hero just like them. They teach a little boy to emulate them, to love them, to worship them. And then they get caught using performance enhancing drugs. And then they have hurt someone. Thank you. <laughs>